So I wanted to take a bit of time uh, this evening now, and apologies for the cap, but my hair is horrendous at the moment, but I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk content strategy. We hear about expertise, authority and trust, EAT content, thrown about all over the place, but what does that actually mean? Uh, because for me, what it means is someone says you need some expertise, authority and trust, and then you write a million how-to guides on, on, on your products and the services that you supply. And that's really, really just the tip of the iceberg. It's way more than that. And there's way more you need to understand and think about when it comes to it. Back in 2015, I spoke at Search Leads, which was our first ever Search Leads conference. And I actually touched on this and the advice remains exactly the same as it did five years ago. Google has quality raters, people that will go on your website with a strict set of guidelines and mark your website high and low. And it will do it largely based on the content that is available on your website and online about you and your business and how you display expertise, authority and trust. So it's really important that we understand what we do with our content strategy to make sure we get the highest score possible in, in, when these quality writers come to the site. Because when we see these core algorithm updates from Google, this is what's going to affect you. This is where it's, it's going to affect you. So this has to be spot on. And really, when you think about your content and some key principles around it and what you should be thinking about, you should be thinking, is it quality? Am I qualified to say it? And what is my reputation? So is it trustworthy? And they're kind of the three things you should be thinking about when it comes to uh, your content strategy and how you develop it and what you look at. Yes, there will be things and topics you write on, but you need these fundamental principles uh, in mind. So quality, when it comes to quality, you need to be thinking, well, how much time did I put into creating this content? Did I research it? Um, did I, uh, did, have I pulled in visuals to help explain it? Um, you know, what, what amount of effort has gone into developing this content and did it require skill to develop it or could anybody have written the content that sits uh, on my website and across my web platforms? Is there an amount of talent that went into it, specialist knowledge and understanding that only me and my business would know about and I can really add value to it? When we're talking about quality, that is what we're talking about. If you're churning out generic content based on the fact you want to rank for a list of keywords and need to write something around it and you farm that content out, that's not quality. And in the long term, that's the kind of thing that is going to hurt you when it comes to being rated by these quality raters. So that's, that's, that's tip number one, really. In terms of negative signals, so things that you would look for in terms of quality is a negative signal. And this is coming from Google's guidelines, not mine, so I'm not just making this up. But lack of editorial control, so if anybody can go on there and produce the content, it's probably gonna be deemed low value in terms of, in terms of quality. Uh, purpose of the page isn't clear, obvious one, poor grammar, spelling, so on and so on, absolutely. Technically poor, formatting is out of place, doesn't read well, any duplication, distracting ads everywhere, or just basic information. So overkill, we've all seen it, a thousand words on how to change a light bulb. Things like that are gonna, are gonna take away from how your content is seen and, and make it look low quality. So no matter what you're producing, you have to have that in mind when you're producing your content. And they say within the guidelines that having a low score on quality when someone reviews your website is enough to give you the lowest score across the board. So it will impact at some point your rankings and SEO visibility. What makes you qualified? How do they know if you're qualified to say what you're going to say? They're encouraged, the quality um, evaluators are encouraged to look you up. So to look at who you are, what you do, uh, if you're a legitimate entity, person, um, and what qualifications you have in the area to make that content and say those things about the products and services that, that you supply. So being trustworthy is key here having detailed contact information on your website so they can then make it easy to find, so they know exactly who you are and that you exist. Having a payment policy, exchange and returns if you're selling things, reviews from customers on your website that give trust, that tell, that tell a quality rater, 
these people can be trusted, they supply these goods and these customers are happy. So anything around that and, and accessibility is gonna, is gonna add to that trust. But when, when it comes to you being qualified, it's not just gonna come down to what's on your website and what you say. They are actively encouraged to go out on the web and look you up to see where you've been mentioned or where you contribute in other areas or to even just clarify who you are um, and confirm it. So you have to be active, you have to be out there, your profile has to be out there. You can't be a hidden entity just doing things online. In order to build trust, you have to be qualified and to be qualified, they have to see you, who you are and why you are qualified. And then the last one is, is reputation. And this is really where uh, digital PR and good solid link building comes in because again the quality raters are asked to go out there on the web and look for where you've been mentioned spoken about referred to and good digital PR means there's lots of references across the web that are easily accessible and they're easy to find that can verify who you are but more importantly that you that you're trusted if you have a lot of links and mentions even from um, the biggest publications uh, in the world you're probably going to you know, be trusted and, and, and your reputation's, well, your reputation's going to be good to a degree. We'll get that onto that in a minute though. But if you have these, at least you're there, at least you're visible and they know who you are. And therefore digital PR, regardless of the links, is worth doing purely on that basis alone. But of course, when it comes to reputation, what others say about you is way more important than what you say uh, uh, about yourself and will be judged higher. So you need to make sure that you're delivering a good service in terms of what you do and you are trying to promote and encourage positive feedback. Because in the guidelines, when it comes to your content strategy, prolonged and consistent negative feedback will impact on the score you get and therefore impact eventually on your rankings. And these really are the key things, quality, qualifications, reputation. Yes, your content strategy needs to be based around your products and services, and it needs to be based on being helpful and useful, but you need to have those three key principles in mind if you really want to maximize uh, your content and get the right strategy that's gonna improve your rankings. Um, yeah, I just think a lot of people forget that. They throw around EAT content like it's some kind of silver bullet, and it's just not. There's so much more uh, to think about. But yeah, that's my three things, three tips three things you need to remember about your content strategy.